We will be there soon. But not right now. Hi guys, welcome back. Scanlink here and we're off for more of a hang time and we had a lot to talk about in the last episode. The, annou the announcement on August 20th, 2018 covered DLC and a new port for the Switch coming soon at the time of this recording, of course. And in the last episode, we did a lot of plumbing. We cleared out the subcom well and destroyed a toilet. <laughs> And in this episode, we're actually not going to do a lot of contractual obligations. This time, we're going to go for the Blue Time Rift. But we need to choose something in order to get through, and that depend and that will determine the story things that will happen when we do things. So I think we want to avoid all kerfuffle and just choose the subcon well, because the only things that change is pretty much the minions telling us where to go. And if you remember, when we were on our way to the subcon well in the last episode. We dealt with some spirits that were blocking our way to the burning forest. That's what we're going to do today. <laughs> right, now first of all, I want to come over here. Welcome to the Snatcher's Humble Abode. It's actually quite a nice, warm place. <laughs> and it plays the music again. What's up, kiddo? You don't know where to go. You're supposed to be cleaning the well, kid. It's deep inside the swamp, but it's big enough even a tiny thing like you can't miss it. Try not to trip and hit your head at the bottom. <laughs> Joke's on you, buddy. I already did that. Instead, I'm going to go for other timepieces. But I am not going to buy anything from the badge seller right now. I'll leave that for later on this episode, because even though we have 533 ponds, kind of need the money for that 400 badge that used to be 100 still. But we'll be grabbing that in this very episode. But for now, I want to head over this way to this noose. We passed by this earlier in the very first mission of this level, but we couldn't do anything with it. But now we can. Notice the uh, action button command, depending on what game of the, the version of the game you're playing. Here's the thing, it needs the hookshot badge. Why hello there, you look new around here. You know, I haven't seen a good solid neck like yours for a long time. I wouldn't mind being strapped around a cute neck like yours. Alright, that's a bad touch, we're leaving. <laughs> yep, the nooses are possessed. And they want to literally strangle that kid to death. Jokes on them, we have the hook shot, but that's kind of morbid. <laughs> I mean, uh, considering in the location that we are, it makes sense, but at the same time, <laughs> she's just a kid. The Snatcher at least has reasons, but why would the Snatcher put, like, possess nooses? Don't make sense. By the way, I just want to jump over here and ignore that spider, and I'll just do it again. In order to get an ice gun that's just chilling over here. Yeah, from that burning building, you, there's multiple ways of getting to it. You could jump up from those uh, invisible branches, I'm trying to find the words here, in order to get up, and that can get you to both these items, and they intend you to home attack that spider, but you don't need to if you know how you move. Speaking of moving, we want to go straight down here and take out these other two spiders. All we want to do is just lure them down and whack them before they spin attack you like the skull tillers that they clearly are. And this guy won't be targeting them anymore, so you can grab yet another ice yarn. Yeah, they're in the fire forest. It's funny how they can, like, persist, and yet they're yarn, so you'd think they would burn, but they're ice, so you'd think that they would counteract the fire, but at the same time they could be melting, and if they're melting they could go up in flames and nothing makes sense. Heck, they made a hat that, you know makes you ice that's kind of a thing so yeah anyway <laughs> enough about that I yep there it is I want to go this way I'm following a very specific route that I have laid down for myself for this very project mainly because the fire forest is kind of sprawling and your field of view isn't exactly the best because of the flaming haze that's all around so I'll be going in a very unique pattern to minimize backtracking except for a couple of items that I can't really you know avoid doing there's a rift token in this chest Hard to spot in the haze, but you know, if you're good, if you have the good eye, you'll notice that it's a block on a stump. Just hit the bell and jump up, and there you go. Of course, you can use your. Actually, I want to grab those ponds. I don't actually have the magnet badge on right now. Do I want to swap that off? Kind of need the hookshot badge, 
kind of want the magnet badge, but I kind of need the hookshot badge. Don't need the hover badge, but it would help. You know what? I'm going to have the magnet badge on for now, because despite having the hover badge, minimizing or com completely negating full damage, um, yeah, I, I kind of want the ponds. Just in case, because we're going to need more money than usual. Because, you know, updates. I want to come running all the way over to this ice block. It's actually a bell encased in ice. What we want to do is bring it to this dude. Chuck that. Break it. And then I want to whack it, actually. Change the toilet mask for extra assurance. Bounce on this mushroom. Yeah, the red ones have seem to have, like, ver varying bounce... Like, uh, height bouncing. I think that, okay, that's the word. Varying uses, like, uses of height, I guess, is the right term. Really having trouble forming commentary this episode. And that leads us to another relic that is a ref token. Yeah, the thing is about the, those mushrooms, in fact, the, that pink mushroom in particular, that is a non-tangible tree branch, and yet that is a physical mushroom. I mean, it would make sense if it's, like, in the field and it's active like that, but when it ain't, that mushroom should be falling, because we fell right through it, and we're real. So, yeah, that kind of breaks physics. Just a bit. Right, so, with the haze once again, it's a little bit of a problem. I need to... Wait, hang on a second. There's an ice block over there, so that means I need to go across this way. Follow these row of ponds, I think. There's a memorial right here. Am I where I need to be? No. No, 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 no. Go back. See, this is the problem. Because of the haze, it's kind of hard to... Basically, when I mapped this out, I pretty much had uh, some set pieces as reference points. Since I'm getting a bit turned around right now. So I want to be here. Yeah. Head to... Oh, boy. Statues have now come alive. I was hoping that was going to happen in the last episode. It did not. Yes. This is what I meant by that the uh, statues can be creepy. They can just somehow come alive and chase you. Ah, there we are. Okay. So you want to head to this spiral uh, tree. Oh, boy. Hop up here. <laughs> you can't get me here. Yeah, and, so, and then they'll just run back to where they spawn. What I wanted to do from over there is what I was trying to say. Was find a... Spiral of branches that make a stairway and then head over to this little area Which is like a segmented of courtyard in the burning area. This is where I want to be next Avoid that this one can come alive as well be warned once he starts chasing you and falls down He won't be able to respawn. Oh, there we are. Oh I did not know they could use those balloons. He could have actually got me I've been spooked <laughs> But yeah, once he's down there, he'll pretty much be locked on you all the time, as you can see right here, because he thinks he's touching me. And, uh, or she, depending on what the statues are. But that pretty much means if you fall into the courtyard area and he sees you, you're pretty much screwed. You're going to take damage and he'll be stuck on top of you. So, yeah. But anyway, I wanted to come up here so we can have a look up. He's looking at those two spiders, so we need to take them out. That really threw me off. <laughs> I want to try and avoid these heart ponds when possible, but the, the uh, magnet badge don't help. Have it mostly for the money, but yeah, that's kind of a problem. Whack you. There we are. I thought it was going to spin then. And I want to home it. Excuse me, I was pressing X. There we are. Triangle for PlayStation viewers, I believe so. Not too sure. And uh, what's up here? Isn't it just ponds? Yeah, it's just ponds. Because we've already got a blue. We've already got a blue and a purple time rift active. So I believe there's supposed to be something up there, though. Right, so what we want to do is hop in here, so I'll just do that. There we are. That'll work. There we go. We got that token free now, so let's just do a double jump lunge here. Double jump lunge here. Need that pom. And because I don't have the hover badge, if I do fall, I'm going to take a hit worth of damage. So I've got to be wary about that, which is another reason why I don't want to be grabbing uh, heart ponds quite often. So... But actually, we don't want to leave this area right now, because there's actually one thing that we do need to do. And when we grabbed that item, it was actually up there. I should have said that when we were actually grabbing the uh, item, so I could leave the graphic on screen a bit longer, because I have it in such a way. And that was also quite... A little bit janky on how I handled it in uh, Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess. I will admit, it has to be stayed on screen longer than when I was actually looking at the item. But we need to come up here for this photo... Uh, well, photo, portrait, whatever. And the fire is actually right below us. I want to know, can I nail this throw? Oh, it bounced over! That would have been such a snipe! Looks like we need five this time. That's quite hefty. I can't believe I missed that shot. That would have been amazing. Anyway, 
need to speed this up just a tad. We need to dwell a mask here. This guy is looking at the bombs this time, so that's a bit of a problem. So what I want to do is activate this so I can jump up here and grab this. And there is actually a cherry bomb just over there, if you can see that, which is what you need to use in order to blow that portrait free. But what I'm going to do is try and cheap it out and use this one. There we are. <laughs> Nailed it with the explosion. Okay, so that gives us a little bit of try, but well, it gives us a little bit of time extra saved. But here's the thing. Uh, is it beyond? No. Is it above? Well, clearly not. He's looking inside. When you see space-like blocks like this, they are the inverse of the non-tangible platforms that we've been seeing that are in green. If they're dark blue space-like, the Dweller Hat will let you walk through them for a limited time. If it runs out, you can only walk out of it. You can't walk further in. It will push you out and repel you. Keep that in mind. Just let that explode for now. Please don't freeze me in midair. That was bad. Yeah, that messed me up. Thanks for that. I was trying to, you know, jump ahead a bit. Right, so let's get up here. And with that block gun, we can now actually land on this platform. I... Did actually nail that, but I jumped a bit too many times and messed it up, so that's a problem. Okay, I'm not having good luck here. That badge re that badge recharge hat recharge badge, excuse me, I was about to say badge recharge badge, that would not be correct. That hat recharge badge would actually be really helpful for this platform for these platforming sections, considering that you're gonna be using your hat power quite often and you'll have to wait for the recharge. But you don't need it as long as you have patience. I'm just trying to be a little bit quick. So that's yet another one. I need to now equip the sprint hat because this one's quite far away. We need to actually dash all the way over here and we can't go any further because of this barrier, which is a shame because there's an item right over there in the distance that we can see but cannot grab yet. So we'll have to leave that for a bit. Let's hop up here. Pretty simple. This is probably the easiest one out of the bunch that's not out of the way. And we just got to hop foot it back. So I'm just going to grab some of these along the way. Yeah, I wouldn't blame people for moving out. <laughs> Considering what that minion said, this place is haunted. Plus, this is like pretty much at the edge of the burning forest, so why the hell would I like want to be here? Oh, by the way, if you switch a hat while it's active, you still have, you have to wait for that hat to cool down before you can use your current equipped hat. Which means even the sprint hat that has no recharge time, you I couldn't use it there because I was still waiting for the cooldown. So keep that in mind when you're trying to hot swap hats very quickly that actually like use abilities or don't have abilities that require recharge so we needed to climb up all the way this way in order to get to this one but we do need to come back up here because there is actually something above us we have to follow those branches all the way up and then loop back around on ourselves but we have to do this oh really <laughs> that's happening a lot there we are and then we can just finish off by using this one that we freed earlier here baby name it Yeah, that's definitely Hat Kid, because you didn't say it the same before. Wow. <laughs> you know, when I've, I've played this game like over three to four times already since the span of the year, and not often does a collectathon make me do that, but this game's like just short enough that I can play it multiple times. Plus, obviously, I wanted to do a Let's Play on it, so there's that. But now there's DLC coming for it, and I'm just like, holy crap, that is awesome. Don't know what happened to my voice there. I kind of cracked. <clears throat> Maybe I need to clear my throat and not mess up a jump. Give me a minute. How does a forest perpetually burn and not burn at the same time? <laughs> Magic, I guess. Yeah, there's actually uh, something that you can do to ease the pain here. If you have mods, of course, you got those... Uh, oh, god damn it. I tried to use my hat when it wasn't recharged. Okay, what I was saying was, there are mods that obviously allow you to fly and all that. But what I was saying was, the official mod of Lilac's Headpiece, once again, could actually help quite often here. In fact, I haven't shown that kind of trick off, so I might as well do it now. Let's actually use this in some capacity. I was going to wait until I actually had a certain die that's actually built into the game to do it, but that actually made things a little bit easier. I failed three times already, so I thought I'll just do that to speed up, but that's what I was talking about. You can use these to make some certain jumps a lot easier. Ironic thing is, unless you didn't have any mods, you need <laughs> the Dweller Mask in order to get Dweller Yarn. <laughs> Isn't that a bit redundant? <laughs> Just saying, that's not the right thing. I want to go back to the Manga Badge. Even though I'm probably going to take full damage by jumping from here. That's fine. If I double jump out of it quick, like, like at late enough. Yeah, there we are. Not quick, but late enough. Won't take any full damage. So that's pretty cool. So I want to switch back to the Sprint Hat. And I pretty much want to 
follow the edge of the forest here, because we're pretty much done on this side. There wasn't much done to do on the other side that we're going to right now, but we're almost there already. But that's what the sprint hat's all about. There's a little section off little area around here that doesn't actually have anything in here. There's nothing in the bush, not even a hidden pond. That mushroom doesn't bounce as high enough. Same with the mushrooms outside. Kind of strange. There's a circle of bushes here, and there's also a circle of rocks here with a... With a bush we can actually interact with. Hmm. We'll come back to that. First of all, though, the more obvious item that's right here. Do three homing attacks on... Excuse me, I was pressing the X button. Why did that not go off? Thankfully, they respawn pretty quick. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. And I bounced over it. Are you kidding me right now? Let's try it again. There's actually an achievement for home attacking about five times in a row. But, obviously, I'm not going to get it here because they don't respawn quick enough for me to actually do that. Can we get this, please? Thank you. Bloody hell, that was ridiculous. But there's actually a blue shiny thing in the distance over there that's in a purpley, bubbly place. That's what we're going for, that time rift. That's how we're finishing off this entire section so we'll get booed out of the level anyway, which is part of my plan. Now, I want to head back. This is something that you wouldn't actually know unless you've played Zelda games before. If you've played Zelda games, you know that in the middle of, circle, of a circle of stones, no matter what it is, bomb it. And you get stuff. We get a yarn! This yarn is interesting. Not only unless you have played Zelda games and you know that anything in circles is obviously, you know, good for bombing, because you'll get stuff, you'll get rewarded. This yarn, for whatever reason, as far as I'm aware, because I practiced this game and played it many times, this yarn, like, respawns infinitely. I don't know why, it just, it's the only yarn that does it, but this means that you can pretty much get infinite yarn. I'm not going to be doing this, but I will be showing that off in another visit to this level. With that, though, we're pretty much done around here. There's one more item left to grab, and we will have everything in the burning forest already. I just need to find a noose. Uh, there it is. Let's just do a couple of power slides there. I would be honored to be the one who squeezes the life out of you. I do not approve, good sir, and... Whoa! Okay! <laughs> that actually caught me by surprise. I don't remember that being there. That's a glowing... Mafia graffiti. Hmm. But yeah, uh, don't want you squeezing any life out of me, buddy. I came up here for the brewing yarn, which, funnily enough, a short walk away, you can use it to get that infinitely spawning yarn. <laughs> kind of ironic. In multiple ways. Maybe it was planned, who knows. But, that is the last item in the burning forest. We're already wearing the brewing hat, which is kind of ironic as well, because we just grabbed that, but nothing really much else to say there. We could be platforming across these branches to go to other sectors that we've unlocked right now, including the green barrier, which stopped us originally, but now we can actually go through. But we're right next to a time rift right now, which if we turn around over here and just come down here a second, we're right next to that bridge from before where we had to do delivery and where we got our first dwelly on, which is all pretty sweet. And yeah, you can actually stand in this without getting affected. Kind of odd considering that if you come up here and actually stand on it, it acts like the swamp war. There's the hands. But we're here right now, so we've got a bit of a platforming challenge to do, so I say we literally hop right on in and claim ourselves another timepiece and repair more paradoxes. We got red cubes this time. We know what the blue ones are, that's just the generic thing, and that thing's floating around a hook. Looks like we're gonna have to swing straight into it. Red blocks full. And they are very quick on doing it. They are the donut blocks of this game, but they literally drop by a tap. So you gotta be quick. And by being quick, I'm actually not gonna have the sprint hat on. I'm gonna have... Yeah, you know what? Screw it. We'll have Cappy. Why not? Could change my die as well. Actually, yeah, you know what? I will change my die. Might as well. Since it's Mario Sunshine and all. Once again, as I've said before... Thank you for actually proving my point. The lamp posts in these levels act as checkpoints, and the game actually tells you that they are as such. Uh, I was not actually going to make that jump, so let's head back on that one. In fact, yeah, we're going to go this way, actually, because there's hooks here. But if you can nail your jumps, you can actually... It looked like I was about to clip through that there. Yeah, if you nail your jumps, you can actually make it across without doing sick flips, which I'm trying to do, but I'm utterly failing in the execution. Yeah, the hookshot has quite a range. Even if you can't see the target, as long as you know that you're near it, you pretty much will reach. And even if you and if you activate the hookshot 
well you are falling, as long as it's actually been shot, it will latch on, no matter what the distance is. So as long as you're close enough to activate it, it will hit. Of course, if I wanted to do more skillage jumps, I could just, you know, use Cappy's insane jumps in the first place. Which is, funnily enough, even broken in its own game of origin, but there we go. Do not use your sprint hat on these platforms, it's messed me up so many times. They fall too quick for you to even do it, just jump off of every one every time. You touch one, I landed on my butt there, I was just above full damage, just below full damage ratio. That could have messed me up, because that could have actually knocked me out. And I just nailed that, swung right in. Just had a bit of trouble at the beginning. Alright, what am I getting this time? There's two things that I really want at this point. Actually, no, three. What am I going to get? That is not what I want. I want to reroll. No, that's not what I want. I want to reroll. Come on, don't do this to me. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Yes! Ah! I love this. I'm going to talk about this. I know there's going to be a weird cliffhanger in the middle of a video. Because I'm not actually going to end it off right now. But I'm not going to equip that. I'm pressing B. It is perfect for the Subcom Forest. And I don't want to use it right now. Because we're actually going to leave Subcom Forest for now. We're going to get our map badge. And we're going to head back into Dead Bird Studios. Because there's that blue time rift that showed up. Oh, well, well, wait, wait, wait. Before I do... I need to cover this first. We haven't been able to, we have been able to go up here since we've had the ice hat, but I haven't actually gone up here yet. Mainly because we need the hookshot badge to do something up here. Welcome to the mailroom, and the mafia executive is here. What are you doing in my ship? We didn't even get an intruder alert. Oh wait, it is you, tiny baby alien. You have returned. I can stay in alien spaceship, yes. I can look at private mail, yes. Learn how aliens think? Please! There's so much mail from faraway places. When Mafia read mail, it's almost like Mafia is there. Here, come read mail with Mafia. Together we can pretend to be in faraway places. Yes, in the PC version only, this room is how you access mods. The only way to get into this room is have eight timepieces and the ice hat. But we left it until now when we have the hookshot badge, because regardless of being ac having access to to mod levels and rift, um, yeah, just time rifts. I want you to jump and use the hookshot. You get an achievement, fantastic, and this is just fun to do. <laughs> and in the console versions, there is also a time rift in here that we can do right now. It's a blue time rift, but it's not exactly here in the PC version because we have Mafia time rifts and levels to do. That's because that is actually located in another room onwards. We'll cover that later. I want to go back to the cappy cap for now because it kind of matches. That was just rude! So, we meet again. My arch nemesis! Why is he reset to not being talked to before? That's kind of weird. Alright, I skipped all that. That is very odd on why that reset, and I had to go through the cutscene again, but yeah, we've already covered that, so let me just purchase the badge and let's just ignore that ever happened. I cut it out for you guys. When still, points to nearby relics, and now, rift tokens, which for some reason justified a 300 pawn increase. That should be auto-equipped. Let's see, uh, let's have the brewing hat back on here. So, yeah. Compass badge. Right, so what I want to do is come back up here. And I said blue time rift. It's located in the conductor's train, it seems. But we don't want to go to the next level just yet. We've got two levels to go through. Yeah, they didn't actually appear. I did say in the, la in the last episode, that, uh, or the episode before, that for saving reasons, I had to actually do that again because I had to respawn at a certain point because I checked something. But, yeah. That appeared, and I need to go on to Murder on the Hour Express, because if I go forward, I won't actually be able to access this, so... Back to the murder where we go, and, well, it's just located right there, so we've got another platforming challenge. This time, however, we got switches to activate, and it's getting more complicated now, as you can see. We need to do some wall jumps in angles that you wouldn't really expect, in order to actually hit some switches, and manipulate the level as such. Jump down here. Really? That was enough? That was barely enough for 4 damage. 
And the owls are now attacking us, throwing books at us. Why are you attacking me, good sir? I am your friend. Well, we're not now, I guess, because I literally just made you poof out of existence. These platforms are very fast moving. Just plan your jump ahead, despite having floatier jumps, and you should be fine, I say, as I fall. So let me get back over there really quick by doing some speed... Uh, uh, I keep wanting to say power slides, that's not the term. And now I'm failing yet again. Oh! I landed in the middle, but then I jumped too early. Well, I actually died in a time rift. All my damage that I took was pretty much to full damage. That's what I should have been doing. I should have been jumping in the middle, because at least then I have the, the, like, the least amount of chances of falling. By the way, those slopes, even though they're not, they don't look steep, they can actually be uh, very deadly and make you auto slide. Even though it doesn't look like you could. I mean, you can run up them. It's just that sometimes an auto slide may happen. So just be careful about that. Yeah, you want to be waiting for those blocks to spin so you can hit the panels in order to activate a stairway, I guess, to get over here. Watch out on how these gears move. They're all interconnected. Got a little uh, sleeper right there. We're going to ignore him for now. I forget what they're called. I think they're just called uh, Dreamers, I think. And... Oh, I remember what I need to do now. I need to ride up the gear. <laughs> Just like you would do in Badger Kazooie Nuts and Bolts in the first level if you just want to like break the level and like play the game like a proper, you know, collector fall and even though there's nothing to collect by doing that. I can't tell you how many times I did that because I just wanted a little bit of a platform change instead of using vehicles. It's kind of odd really that I I like the vehicle section. Like I like the gummy ships in Kinemarts and Kinemarts 2, and it's kind of similar to that in Badger Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, but I don't like Badger Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. <laughs> I've got it on Xbox 360, because, you know, if I've got what just happened to those pawns? Excuse me, game? They just disappeared out of nowhere. They're, they're falling through the floor. Don't question it. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> that is very weirdly janky. Alright, what are we going to get this time? I don't want that. That looks awesome. That's a Dweller Flare. I'm gonna roll again. Oh, that's even better. It looks like a Hollow Mask from Bleach. Which, of course, is another Dweller Flare. Now, I was after a different hat, and I was also after a remix, but you know what? I will live with this. This is pretty cool, and it's one of my favourite Dweller Flares that's built into the game. And with that, we are not actually done. We are going to go one more time with the sprint hat. And we are going to go into the next level. Why? When we only have about five minutes left and I want to squeeze it in because I always want to like get episodes quite meaty in. It's because this is a very short level. And you got to do it fast. Battle of the Birds starring Conductor as the Savvy Train Conductor. Some go as Reckless Detonator and Owls as Owls. Reckless Detonator, eh? Let's unlock it. Oh dear. Things are gonna go bang. Yeah, that's how long the train normally is. Even shows you where it is as well. But... Don't believe what you're looking at. Go on in. We're getting ready to shoot the biggest action movie in bird history. The movie? It's gonna be the bomb! <laughs> and I, I mean bomb in the good way, Picnic. Excuse me! How rude! And by the way, the only time that we can actually see this place in colour. I love this jazzy music. Before we do anything, let's talk to the badge seller. Badges are totally in right now. That's what I've been told to say. So make a purchase, please. Fair enough. We want that pin. We won't be able to buy any badges at this point. I would normally do so, but you know, that map badge that normally costs 100 now requires four times the price. So we're just going to equip another badge to fill that gap. Kind of messes with my plans just a tad. Didn't check the price before I started recording, but it's not that big of an issue. We still got to do a little bit of grinding regardless. That's how it did in practice. But now that we have that, yep, I'm going to just cancel. We don't need the uh, scooter badge for now. I'm going to pop the... Actually, the magnet badge is not something I want on right now. 
In fact, the, the map badge, we're not actually going to see the effects of at this point. So I think I'll have the non the no bonk badge. And once I equip, equip another badge, which is going to be the hover badge, we get a new achievement. Badge master, equip three badges. Pretty simple. And with that, uh, we actually require the hookshot badge. Yeah, if we went in this mission earlier, it will say that we won't have the necessary equipment to complete it. You require the hookshot. Oh, well, I didn't hookshot it enough in order to activate it. Let me try it again. There we go. All right, lassie. Listen up. I have some bad news. That lever you just pulled, uh, it starts to train self-destruct sequence. And that ain't no joke. It'll blow up. Why was that installed? That was not there before. I need a movie with some real intense action. So that's what we're going to do. The train's going to blow in a few minutes. Is he serious? But you can save us all, lassie. Get to the switch at the front of the train to turn it off. Well, that seems easy enough. We've been through the train before. And you're better maker in time, all right? I don't care about the owls or yourself, but you don't dare blow up me train for real. It's my baby. Then why did you set up a bomb? Why not just rig it? And plus, that's rude. I call misconduct, Mr. Conductor. The cameras are going to be rolling, lassie. You hurry now. Go over and out. Oh boy, got to get moving. We have two minutes. And there was a timer right there. When running through this entire place, you've got to activate all switches in order to get through the, the section. There are no collectibles to grab, so don't worry about that. Just collect clocks to boost up your time by 20 seconds. The problem is, there is actually an achievement here. Get through without... Um, I think it's get through without getting knocked out and grabbing any time piece... Oh, well, I say time pieces. Any clocks. So you pretty much got to do it in one fell swoop without getting hit and without grabbing any times. And the train is way longer and way different than what we had before, and it's collapsing as we go. Some of them are sequenced to do other things, so you've got to use the set pieces to your advantage, but you've also got to avoid clocks, and if they put clocks in the way when you're trying to get the achievement, that's kind of a problem. I haven't got the achievement before, so we'll be getting that live. I'll be speeding that up, obviously, so you guys can actually see my winning run, and that's not good. And, yeah, I doubt that the train is like this, where we have, like, moving rocks. And we're getting, int like, intermittent messages on the intercom telling us it's going to blow. And yet, I think the train is pretty much ruined as it is already. Yeah, that's one of the, uh, things that's going to ha- that's one of the clocks that's going to be a big pain. Right, we've got to hurry now. Look at all these! Yeah, you got to beat this level in two minutes without getting hit. That's insanity. Yeah, you've actually got to make all these full, so that's kind of a problem right now. There's a clock in the middle there that's easily avoidable. Remember that the ba the reason why I haven't got the uh, magnet badge on is because that, um... Oh god, that was a very janky movement right there. Hibuski! Yeah, you've got to be careful that the uh, magnet badge that we have actually does affect the time, the, the, the clocks that you grab. So if you're going for the achievement, it's best to not have the badge equipped. Okay, I don't need health, I'm already maxed out, but just making sure there's some bullet bills here. The problem is when you're trying to go quick, I'm getting hit quite a lot here. Oh, and these ones are evil because if you jump on them again, you get hit, I believe. Okay, that's not what I'm supposed to do. Okay, I did not do that right at all. I need to do that a lot better. You know, I'm gonna have to grab this clock, I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> oh my god, I'm taking so much damage. Okay, and with that, we are done! Oh, you made it! And in time! Oh, <laughs> look at all this raw footage we got! Look at how you, 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 you're running for dear life! <laughs> oh, what? We did it in the name of cinematography! And to beat that no good DJ Groove. I bet he won't be able to make half the movie we just made. At least I wouldn't have to go through the level twice each time and put my life at risk and you don't care. I think he's a way better manager than you. Alright, here, take one of these, uh, thingamajigs you like. You deserve it. 
Well, at least you give me back what is actually mine. But in a way, that's blackmail at this point. And where's my pawns? I deserve to be compensated. And as I said, yep, we've got to go through this again. So, don't know how long it's going to take me. I'm going to get a lot of pawns for it, at least. Let's see if I can actually do this. And if not, I'm probably going to have to cheap it out with the wing cap, perhaps. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do this. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this live. And that's broken for some reason. Uh, that puts a kink in my plans. I'm guessing I'll speed this up a tad. Don't know why that's broken. That took about 10 tries. There we are, the achievement is in the corner. Just skipped his text because that was ridiculous. I actually got enough pawns in order to buy the badge that I was originally gonna buy, which was a scooter badge. But with that, guys, that was a rush, a train rush. That was our movie. See you guys next time. I might have to fix this edit if, yep, it didn't work.